main things to think about when you're pike fishing on lures is the tackle that you use. Obviously, these range, the fish ranges from small jacks up to 30, 40 pounders. Um, so you've got to take that into consideration where you're fishing. But for the most part, you've just got to balance that tackle out right. You're going to be using slightly bigger lures, maybe heavier lures like the uh, Fox Rage jointed replicants and the, the replicant wobbles. You know, these can go up to well over 100 uh, grams in weight. So you need the right tools for the job to both cast them and work them properly. Uh, now today, I'm using two rods. I've got um, a bait caster setup and I've got a fixed ball spinning setup. A bait caster setup is really quite handy for flicking lures about. It gives you a lot more control. The casting's a lot smoother in terms of you're just using one hand to click off the bail arm smash it out and then start winding it in. I really do like using bait caster setups because of that reason, it gives you a lot more precision on the cast. Uh, for the rod that's, that's matched to the, the, the bait caster I've got today, we use the uh, Terminator Swimbait Special. Really, really sexy rod, really, really good. One of the best rods in the range for me. Uh, now these boys cast uh, 40 to 100, 100 grams, uh, so they're, they're well, powered for the range of lures that we have in the in the rage range uh, the replicants and the pro shads the bigger lures uh, not only do they cast them well but when you're working them they give you a lot of feel and they don't over get overpowered by the weight of the lure in the water and obviously as well if you hook into a decent fish you've got enough control to get that fish to the net and onto the bank <laughs> for the spinning side of things uh, this is the new prism pike spin rod uh, launched at the end of last year, really great range of rods. This one very similar in weight range to the Swimbait Special the Terminator that I have the uh, bait caster set up on. It does 30 to 100 grams. This one's slightly longer than that rod as well, so you've got a little bit more uh, range in terms of casting. Uh, very powerful rod, but again quite sensitive in terms of the, the, uh, the lures that we're using today, the heavier lures. You can still feel everything that goes on and if you get a bump straight away. It's not like the old broomsticks of old where you'd have to wait for the pike to fly away for it to, to move uh, an inch. This is very sensitive fishing, uh, even though you're losing, using quite big lures. Um, I've been using the wobbles on this today uh, and the shallow reps as well and it's handled them absolutely fine. This one I've got mounted up with a 4,000 size prism reel. Now obviously with heavy rods, large lures, the other thing to remember in terms of balancing your tackle out is the braid that you use. Um, you don't want to go too thin, you don't want to go for a lower breaking strain, because obviously not only are you going to be playing possibly big fish and chucking about heavy, heavy lures if you get a, a tangle and uh, you, your lure stops mid-flight because you've got a tangle at your reel, you can have uh, snap-offs and all that kind of stuff. You want something that's robust and heavy enough to cope with all of this stuff. So I've gone for 60 pound Pro X8 uh, braid from uh, Rage. The diameter of this is, is quite thin, com especially compared to mono. If you had 60 pound mono, it'd be like tow rope. But this stuff's nice and thin. On the 4000 reel, it fills up a spool with 100 meters. Uh, I've gone for the orange one just because it gives you better indication for me, but you can also get black. Um, but it also means that not only if you hit into a big fish, you've got all the power there to play a fish back in, but also if you hook up on a lure, because you know you, you don't want to lose your lures, you'll have the power to get that back in as well. You can pull it through all the, the weeds or from snags or whatever fairly easily. You know, you will lose a few, but it's, uh, it's better to be overgunned than undergunned in this situation, and it doesn't put the fish off whatsoever. Uh, in my experience, it doesn't, doesn't make a difference. You've got a big wire trace, you've got a big lure with a big hook on it, having a thick, relatively thick diameter braid as your main line will not put the fish off whatsoever, but it makes you, uh, allows you to have the power there when you need to, to play fish and get your lures out. One of the important things to think about this time of year, as with any time of year really, uh, for pike, is what depth they're feeding at. Now pike, depending on how deep the water is in front of you, can be on the bottom or fairly close to the surface. This time of year, it's January now, they're probably going to be nearer to the bottom in deeper water, hanging around where the bait fish have uh, shoaled together. They're looking for a stable temperature so the pike will be around there because that's their, their main food source, they won't be far away from them. But you still need to work out what depth they're feeding at. Now for that you need a, a range of lures. The, 
The replicant wobble that I'm using now is great for getting down to the deeper depths. So what you do is you cast out, let it hit the water, keep a tight line from your tip and just count it down in your head. So that was about four seconds. So I'm guessing that was probably around about four or five feet depth. So that gives you a good base measure of, of how deep the water is in front of you. As soon as it hits the bottom there, you've counted it down, start working it back nice and slowly along the bottom. If you don't get any fish, do that a few times if you don't get any fish, then cast out and count down to say three seconds and then work in from there. And then if you've got, say if you've got deeper water, say if you've got 10 foot in front of you, do that maybe every two feet until you find out where the fish are, if the fish are there and if they're feeding. There's lots of ifs with pike. Um, the, only, the only thing is with, with bigger lures like that, that will are weighted and come down, is that you need to work them slightly faster to stop them hitting the bottom, which is where the new lure from Rage comes in that was launched last year, the Replicant Shallow. That comes into play. You can cast that out, let that sink down. Even though it says shallow, it's, you can work it still at relative depths that you wouldn't consider to be shallow so say about five foot six foot and just work it really really slowly because it hasn't got that weight it won't sink so fast so you can work it slowly especially this time of year you just need a little bat in the tail and you'll get you'll get strikes if the fish are there and if they're feeding again you can use that to work in the top half and the top layers of the water and if the pike are there they'll have it This time of year when you're fishing for pike on lures, you have to work pretty hard for every fish you put onto the bank. That can often mean changing your lures quite regularly, basically just to find out what the fish want. Now, colour comes into that quite a lot. So you've got different actions, you've got different sizes and stuff, but colour can make a real difference. Normal convention dictates this time of year when the water goes clear on still waters like this behind me, you go for natural colours. So, such as the supernatural roach and you've got the supernatural perch, in a replicant shallow and wobble range. But that doesn't always hold true. Often you can make a, a very quick change to something like this fire tiger pattern in the wobble and it will really spur them into action. So don't be scared to go for more outlandish colors when the water's clear. Even though it looks a bit strange in the water, it can just trigger them. It can really annoy them into taking your lure. A lot of pike lures nowadays like a replicant shallow, the replicant wobble, and the pro shad, have all got inherent action built in. So that means you cast it out, you retrieve, straight retrieve, and you'll still get an action, a tail bat around. This time of year, it can pay to, to put more into the lure, or, or less as the case may be. So when you cast out, straight retrieve it, but then retrieve it slow this time of year because they haven't got the energy or the inclination to, to necessarily chase a fast moving lure. But then once, you're halfway through or wherever, just pause, let the lure drop down, touch bottom. It's a bit like dead baiting at this time of year where the pike might follow and they're not necessarily that interested, but when it touches down, they'll hang around it and then you leave it two seconds, five seconds, up to 30 seconds, and then all of a sudden twitch it away. They react, they have to spur, it spurs them into action and they hit the lure because it's just a reaction that they have, that they think their, their dinner's getting away. A lot of the time that can result in some, some great fishing. Just that little pause, they drop to the bottom, leave it as long as you dare, twitch, and then bang. Normally they'll hit it straight away as soon as you twitch it up. On a cold day when the action's been quite slow, your concentration can drift. But because the action's slow, one fish can make or break a day. So you really want to keep concentrating all the time, every single cast. And that's especially so when you're bringing the lure right in. A lot of people will just get kind of within 10 feet of the bank, you know, just give it a quick whiz, lift it up. But often if you've had a follow, especially if the fish are in the margins and they've just seen it when just before you get it back in, you can miss out on, on pike doing that. Just, when you're bringing it in, just gently bring it right into the margins, all the way in, work it 
as far as you can into your feet and you can often get hit right underneath your rod tip which you know <laughs> when you're cold can really warm you up. <laughs> 